welcome everybody this is the first video of the ts 100 series this is gonna be ts 101 and on this particular video there is no uh, requirement whatsoever anybody uh, can watch this video and understand you don't have to even own the game i'm gonna explain everything about the game the basics the rules uh, what are you supposed to do to get going and on future videos we are gonna address other topics like strategy on the ts 200 series i'm gonna be covering topics that require you to actually know a little bit about the game but not not too much i'm gonna try to make them as accessible as possible and on a future series i'm gonna start uh, ts 300 uh, we'll be covering the underlying reasons on why we do certain things on TS-200 and TS-100. You will be able to find this uh, different 100, 200, and 300 series by the tag name. They will be starting with TS and then 100, 200, 300, and then another number on the tens and the units. Uh, that will help you all identify which type of uh, crowd should be watching. Uh, if you're a complete newbie uh, to this game, please start with 100 and then build yourself up to uh, 200 and uh, leave the 300 for the last. Well, this said, uh, we're going to start with the video today and let's go. Okay, so this is how the games look when you uh, when you start a game. We're just gonna be playing against the AI because uh, I wanna be explain explaining. I don't wanna ruin anyone's game by playing against them. Uh, okay, so this is a two two people game. You one is gonna be playing uh, the USA, one of the superpowers in the Cold War, and the other one is gonna be playing the USSR. It's a two-people strategy game driven by cards. Meaning we're gonna make decisions trying to achieve a goal and we're gonna use every turn, we're gonna use a card for it. We're gonna have to manage the cards that are not good for us and we're gonna have to uh, use the cards that are good. So in the board, there are different uh, types of countries. There are countries, we're gonna zoom in here a little bit. Countries here. Yep. There are countries that are, have their name in red. Those are called battleground countries. And there are countries that have their name in a little darker color of whatever region they are. And those are called non battlegrounds. So, as we will learn during the region section, Battlegrounds are way more important than non-battlegrounds as they give uh, victory points and they allow you to establish presence, domination, or control. Also, battlegrounds are very important because when we uh, select, we perform certain actions on them called coups, coup d'etat, uh, will reduce the DEFCON when if a, if a coup happens on a known battleground, the, the DEFCON will not go down. DEFCON will be very important as it, as it will be one of the ways that we can win the game. As you can see, the board is separated on different regions. We're going to have Europe, that is all this blue purplish color. Middle East, that is the light blue. Asia, that is the orange. The orange, like egg color, egg yellow color. Africa, that is the this yellow. Uh, South America, that is green. And Central America, that is light green. There is a once sub region. It's not really a region because it's a little bit different than the rest. That is Southeast Asia. That is this uh, have egg yolk, have a little bit lighter egg yolk over here. And 
So you can see how, for example, Spain and uh, Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia is a little bit lighter. This is East Germany, is uh, Europe, and this is West Europe. But they don't score differently. They count as a, as a whole. Um, each region is going to score when its scoring card comes out. So for example, this is the Europe scoring card. The B shuffle in the deck. And at some point, I don't have any in hand right now. And my opponent might. When the scoring card is played and it's your force to play it, if you draw it, you are going to score a set amount of points based on what countries you control. So what is control of a country? Do you see this number? Uh, Italy uh, it has a 2 for example. Countries can have from 1 to 5. Like you see that UK has 5, France has 3, Italy has 2. If you put one point of influence like this, that means uh, you have presence in the country. You have influence in the country, that means you gives you access to adjacent countries. But it doesn't give you control. You have control when you have at least as much as many influence points in the country as the stability. So Italy has two. For example, France with two is not enough to control it. You need three. Now I control France. Okay. Now we're gonna pay a little more attention to the details on the scoring card. So it says presence three. That means each one is gonna get three points for presence. Presence, you see it's here, we both get in it because we both have presence at the moment. Presence means that you have, you control at least one country. At the moment, I control UK because the US starts with UK under the control and the US starts with, uh, they already put the deploy their influence. So they have East Germany and Poland. So they, we both have presence. Now, Domination. Domination has uh, two requirements. You have to have, you have to control or have under your control more battleground countries. And I'll explain. Uh, you have to have more battlegrounds country, the more battleground countries in the region than your opponent. And you also have to uh, have more total number of countries than your opponent. So that means that they control right now two countries. So if I control three battlegrounds, West Germany, Italy, and France, I'll be able to, uh, I'll, I'll be on domination. Well, there is one, one more uh, requirement that is to have at least one non battleground. So thanks to UK, that's already covered. So because now I have four countries to their two, and I have more battlegrounds, and they, they have three on my side and two on their side. Yeah, that allows me to claim domination. Now, control. Control means that you control every single country that is a battleground country. So if I have three in Germany and three in Poland on top of these three guys, then I'll have control. In the case of Europe, that means that's not amount of points. This is the amount of points that each thing gives. Uh, I would just win the game. So yeah, control in Europe is really strong. Uh, really difficult as well. Now, that is not the same for, each, uh, for all the countries. So, for example, in Asia, control is nine, only 9 points. And the, uh, it's important to know that this is not in addition. So, this is instead. So, if you, if you both have presence, you both are going to get 3 BPs. If I suddenly have domination, I don't get 10. I only get 7. So, suddenly I have plus 4. Okay? Now, there is another... Uh, another thing on the scoring card. It says plus one point per control battleground in the region and one point per country control that is adjacent to enemy superpower. That is uh, that is on every single uh, scoring region. So if you go to uh, if you the US the US have three in Romania they will get an extra point 
and we both get extra points for each battleground. So they're gonna get two extra points. I'm gonna get three extra points. So since they basically, like I said, this is like a tag of war, they basically cancel each other out. So I'm gonna get, he's gonna get three for presence and two for battlegrounds. That's a total of five. I'm gonna get seven for domination, three for the battlegrounds. That's a total of ten. So that counts plus five for me. If the Europe scoring would come out, I will get five BPs. It will go five to the blue. Now I'm gonna describe how the turn happens. So the game is divided in 10 different turns uh, in a way that the first three are the early war, the next four, four to seven, are the mid war, and the last three are the late war. Each one of these turns is gonna be split in a headline and six action rounds or seven past the turn uh, four, it can get to eight, but only under certain conditions. Well, the first thing that you do in the game is assign influence. The US, the US I'm playing the US, assigns seven influence anywhere in West Europe. So they're like light up. You see that Austria and Finland are split in a half. That means they count as both. Uh, Starting this, yeah, this is good. So uh, this is how I'm gonna start the game. I have some the seven influence plus two. Uh, the plus two is just a handicap that it's how we normally play. We play with the seven influence plus extra two to balance out the game. As the USSR, is a little favor if you are not counting on that. We're also playing with the. Uh, optional cards. I don't know if there is any of these that are option optional because I've never played the game without the optional cards. I don't think so. Okay, so we're starting like this. And on every turn, the first thing that we're gonna do is select a headline. Headlines are gonna happen in a certain order based on the number that comes here. The higher numbers are first, and in case of a tie, the US goes first. So uh we don't really have anything really good here to start so i guess i'm gonna go for this okay once the uh the headline has happened then we start every turn we're gonna play cards on an action round each one's gonna play a card it's gonna give the turn to the other one that's how the turns are gonna go. So the USSR always goes first. Every single turn they go first. That's the first action round. So that means the US the US always gets the last one, which is also important. In each action round, we're gonna play one card and we're gonna give the turn to the other one. They play NATO, I play Fabia Plan, and now this is their turn again. Okay, now I want to do a little section explaining the different cards that you have in the game. So, we're gonna go one by one here, and we're gonna look into the different type of cards that you can encounter. We're gonna start with our own cards, that in this case, because I'm playing the USA, are gonna be the blue card. This is a blue card, a card that uh, has an effect that is good for the USA. The effect is described here in this box at the bottom is the name of the event here it says early war that means it's added to the deck during the early war so it starts from the beginning and there are other cards that will be added on mid war and late war and then this this number up here this number is the operations value it, that means if you don't want to play the card for its effect this is the value that you're going to use it for Okay, now we're gonna see an opponent's card. Uh, this is Swiss Crisis. This has an, uh, an effect here that is described here. Uh, you see that this one has a star in the name. That means that once this effect has happened once, the card is removed from the deck. It explains, it says it down here. All the cards, like Vietnam Revolts, Blockade, uh, Captain of Scientists, they are like that. 
you see that it's European, doesn't have a star. So it's European, we'll go back in the deck when there is a reshuffle. Reshuffle always happens on turn 3. Sometimes happens in turn 7. And if it doesn't happen in turn 7, it will happen probably in turn 9 or 10. But coming back to Suez Crisis, because this is an opponent event, uh, when we play it, we cannot decide to play the event or play the operations, we always gonna trigger both. We're gonna get the operations value of the card, but we're gonna have to trigger the event. When we play our own cards, we get to choose. These events in the red cards are always bad for you. In the best case, they're indifferent. We're gonna look at a neutral card. This, you see that the star is half red, half blue. That means it's a neutral uh, event. That means we can anybody can trigger it as an event. It's good for either or, depending on who triggers it. And you can it's like like your own cards. You can decide to trigger the event, or you can decide to use it for them for the ops. This one is only one op, so it's almost always evented. The last type of card, it's a is the scoring cards. This type of card do not allow you to do anything but play the but play. You can play the scoring card and that's it. You cannot hold it. That means you have to play it. If you gonna, you always get one card more in your hand than uh, action rounds you have. So you can always hold one card. This card may not be held. That is still one of the ways that you lose the game. You hold a scoring card, you lose the game. Now, what can we do with the cards? So if you take this European Unrest, you'll see here all the available options that you have. You can always, if it's a, your event or a neutral event, like capturing a scientist, you can always play for the event and do what they what you describe in the box. However, sometimes, like in this case, it's European Unrest, we don't want to play the event. This is not super strong. It's not bad, but it's not super strong. So we might want to play for influence. Influence can be placed on any country that has adjacency to other countries. To other countries where you have influence already. So for example, because I have influence in Italy, you can follow the lines. And I, will, I can go to Spain or I can go to Greece. Uh, same with uh, Egypt, Lebanon, Jordan, because I have a uh, presence already there in Israel, I can move. This is extremely important for the game. Being able to have access to other battlegrounds is very, very important. Being removed from Israel would mean that I don't have any access to any other country in the Middle East besides Iraq, which the US has already controlled, so that would force me to pay extra. When a country is controlled and you want to put influence, you cannot just put, like right now I have three because the card has a three, that means I have three operations available to, inf to put influence. I'll put three. Oh, sorry. I'm red scared, so I have one less. Then effect. He played this on headline. So all my cards have one less. Because I have one less, I would only have two. But there's even a bigger penalty. If I want to play influence into Iraq because he controls the country, I have to pay two, one point extra until I break control. So that means instead of three, I would only put one point. One for the red scared effect and another one because he controls the country. That's really inefficient. I'm using a three operation card to put one influence. That is very costly. Now, if you don't want to put influence, you can do other stuff. You can realign, you can coup, and you can space. Let's go one by one. Realignments. Realignment is a type of role that happens with a certain modifier. So both con both superpowers are gonna roll a dice with a modifier plus one for the one that has the most influence in the country, and in this case the USSR, and another plus one for each adjacent country. Remember, adjacent countries are the ones that are connected with a line. So connected to a with a line to. Oh, Connected with a line to these countries is uh, Iran, Jordan, Gulf States, and Saudi Arabia. For each country adjacent that is controlled by the by anyone, 
So in this case, I control Iran. So Iraq give me a plus one. They have a plus one too. So it's gonna be a plus zero. So we're gonna roll a dice. And if if the delta is gonna be subtracted. So if I roll more than them, we're gonna take influence their influence out. If they roll more than me, we're gonna take my influence out. Because I don't have influence, I don't have no I have nothing to lose. Here it will give you a crackdown of the chances depending on the rolls. You don't have to make math or anything. Just look at this and I'll get 58% of the time, nothing happens. 13% of the time, I reduce to 1. 16% uh, of the time, I reduce to 3. And 11% uh, of the time, I reduce it by 2. Now, I'm going to have more than one chance. So, like, how the, how the number affects this type of roll? You're going to have one chance of rolling for every... Uh, operation points in the car. In this this uh, case, I'm gonna have two because of uh, red square. I'm gonna have two opportunities to get a to get a roll on Iraq. Now let's keep going. Two two attempts are a way to take influence from your opponent and add your own. It depends on the roll. So for example, let's say I wanna do a coup in Iraq. It's telling me here, hey, red square is in effect. So my total operation value is two. Two. Now, I'm gonna add. I mean, I'm gonna add two to the roll. So I'm gonna roll, depending on what I roll, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna add two, and then I'm gonna compare that with the coup defense. Coup defense is always twice the stability. So I'm gonna ha I have to be a six because I have a, a two, a four, or higher will match the the step this. The coup defense, twice the stability. For each point that I exceed the defense, I'm gonna take off one of their uh, influence. If I, if they run out of influence, then I start adding my own. This is a uh, queen into a three a stability country with a two of card. It's not the best idea in the world. So here you can see the chances, right? I'm queen. I will be queen uh, two stability, so the difficulty is four. Anything above a three will start taking off just, uh, their influence. And if I roll a five or a six, I will add my own. This is a way to get access to regions that you might not have it. But it's also a way to swing regions. Like you have a battleground. Uh, they have three battlegrounds and you have two and now you coup one that happens a lot in africa for example let's say you control algeria and nigeria and your opponent controls Zaire, angola and south africa but if you go Zaire, suddenly you are three two so you are just taking but you only need one non battleground to take domination now you you might have seen a little different between when i selected syria as my target or i selected iraq syria says defcon would remain a five and here it says Wisco win the grade to four. Iraq is a Baragon country. And as I explained earlier, Baragon countries are important because a coup in a Baragon country will degrade DEFCON. When DEFCON gets to two, nobody can give coups anymore in certain regions, in not in Europe, not in Middle East, and not in Asia. So now we are we're at five, so all coups are allowed. One coup will degrade it to four. So no more coups in Europe, all realignments. If there is a second coup, then Aisha is also protected from coups and uh, realignments. And if there is a third coup and DEFCON goes to two, Middle East is protected from realignments and coups. Now, Central America, South Africa, Sa South America, and Africa are always uh, you are always allowed to go there. But if you coup a DEFCON two on a battleground, the DEFCON will go to one and you will lose the game. We're gonna see that on on, uh, on the last section, but just heads up there. Okay, last but not least, you have the space race. The space race is a way to get rid of cards without having to trigger the effect. It's the only way that you can get rid, almost the only way. There are a couple more, but it's the most effective way to get rid of cards uh, without having to trigger the event. So it's a... Uh, Catherine as a scientist will advance uh, to the next box immediately. But normally, this is an event. It will give us to the first box immediately. 
And normally, we have to roll. But we will discard the card. That always happens, and the effect doesn't trigger. But then we have to uh, roll one, two, three on a dice. If we do that, we're successful. We roll one, two, or three. We'll get to this box. Here on the co bottom corner of the box, it will tell you what is the price for getting here. So the first one that gets to our satellite will get two VPs, two victory points, and the second one will get one. Also, some of them have certain perks, like this you may space two cards, or put you open two and show satellite first. I don't know who gets here first. Once your opponent gets here, you don't have this perk anymore. That's important. And you might see here like how two ups, two ups, two ups. Here is three ups, three ups, three ups, four ups. That's the operations value of the card that you have to discard in order to get here. That's also, that's very important. Because I am under Red Scare Purge, I cannot space Vietnam Revolts anymore. The only card that I might want to space is Suez Crisis. But because I have Katrina Scientist, I don't need to roll. I can just event this and get immediately here, get two BBs, and get ahead on the space race. Now you all might be thinking, okay, now I understand the board, I understand what to do with the cards, but how do I win this game, right? Okay, so there are multiple ways that you can win this game. You can win this game by sheer number of victory points. If anyone achieves 20 here, you get 20 more victory points than your opponent, you're done, you win the game. Now, that is, it's very, very likely for the USSR to end the, the game that way, while for the USA, it's not really. The way that the USA wins the game most times is on final scoring. I'm not making up the statistics. There are ITSL rec, uh, has some statistics that are based on like a thousand games or something, and I can tell you that the USSR wins the game most likely through um, uh, the BP track. So having 20 more victory points than your opponent, about 54% of the time. I will I would actually put the, the picture here. Now. The second way, if that doesn't happen at any point, then eventually we're gonna run out of turns. When turn 10 AR7 uh, ends, we are gonna score every single region that is on the game, except for Southeast Asia. And uh, we're gonna add all of, the, all of those points to the scoreboard. Whoever is up on the scoreboard wins. That's called final scoring. A victory by final scoring. The other way that we can win is by war games. There is a card in the deck called War Games that allows you to end the game on the spot and give six and give six victory points to your opponent. If you do that and you have more than seven victory points, you automatically win the game. Play deck has a little difference with the actual game. I think the actual game allows ties when play deck doesn't. So in the case that you play with six victory points you will give the victory to your opponent. When I think on the official rules, uh, I think, don't don't take my word for it, but I think the USA wins ties. I'm not sure. Anyhow, that's the third way that you can win the game. The fourth way to win the game is when I'm going by likelihood that actually happening. The fourth way that you can win the game is by DEFCON. If you force your opponent, or they willingly do it, if your opponent drops the DEFCON to 1, or you drop the DEFCON on your opponent's turn, they lose the game. There are a handful of cards that enables this. They're called DEFCON suicide cards. One of them is CIA, probably the one that is the is more of you guys are more familiar with. But there are multiple. Even Olympic Games can uh, provoke a death by Deathcon. So be mindful of that. Then the fifth one is Europe control. Like we talked about earlier, if you control every single battleground and you control more countries than your opponent, you have control in the region. 
and if you control your scoring when this card is played or at final scoring, you win the game. It doesn't matter anything else. If you control Europe, you win the game. This is highly unlikely as the positions are very uh, stale on Europe normally. Like the East Bloc is always controlled by the USSR, the uh, Europe. Uh, West Europe is normally controlled by the USA, which they could be if France and Italy are like susceptible to uh, flip sides, but Europe control is like a 2% chance that actually happening. So I think I'll cover that on, uh, on a, another video, how to play for Euro control and when to play for Euro control. And then last one, you can lose by holding a scoring card. You always get one more card than ARs are in the turn. That means that you're always gonna hold one card for the next turn. Unless uh, you discard an extra card because of an effect of a card or whatever. But normally, you're gonna hold a card. If you decide to hold a scoring card, you know that you're gonna lose the game. This actually happens sometimes, like if you uh, have to play a, score, a card that's gonna give enough points to your opponent to win, then I mean, you might hold the scoring card just to, you know, to see if they death on suicide. I don't know, but that's uh, the last one that we're gonna cover. Holding a scoring card automatically loses you the game at the end. So that's it. Um, we cover the board, battlegrounds, non battlegrounds. We cover different cards and what can we do with them, and the regions. Uh, yeah, I think we went through most of the stuff. I'm not gonna uh, create a video on each one of the cards. Uh, I think Jesse Marshall has a very good video on that, and I'm gonna link it down below on the on the description box. And you guys can go see his videos. He does a pretty good job explaining uh, each card and how to play each card. And I'm probably gonna take a different approach. Uh, probably gonna explain how to play for each region. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. I don't have it clear. But uh, thank you for watching and hope to see you guys on the next one.